Let me just round up now. Witnessing is more than carrying a Bible. Opening the Bible. Reading the Bible. Some of our, some of our planned evangelism, outreaches or crusades or whatever we call them, some of them, sometimes they're just a waste of time. Because when we read scriptures, we don't even read scriptures that, that, that they can understand. We read the Tao and the, you know, we, we come up with the old King James, which they will never understand. What stops them from reading from very simple scriptures, very simple uh, translations? The translation does not mean that the word of God is not powerful. After all, the word of God that we now read in English was never first written in English. It was first written in Greek. At least the one in the New Testament was first written in Greek. The Old Testament was first written in Hebrew. So if we, are, if we think the language is in the power, then we must all go and learn Greek or learn Hebrew. And there are people who believe those things. Yet, the, 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 the Bible in your local dialect is powerful. The word of God coming out of your mouth, if you are anointed, if you have been filled with the Holy Ghost, is powerful. Is powerful and strong enough to bring salvation to sinners. Because it's the word of God. Spoken by a vessel that has been consecrated for that purpose, by a vessel in whom the Spirit of God is present. It is God speaking through you. So it's not until you open the Bible and begin to preach that people will know that, 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 that you are witnessing. Many of the things that when we open the Bible, the people don't even know. They don't understand it. You know, a lot of times we behave as if people already know the Bible or people already know. They don't know. You'll be amazed that what they know about Jesus Christ is not what you, what you think you know. I, 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 I remember the story of a couple who went to a particular location and they were preaching Christ to them. And in preaching Christ, they mentioned how Judas Iscariot betrayed the Lord Jesus Christ, how Peter denied him, and how Christ was, was killed. And you would have thought that the people would be sorry for all that he went through. Instead, the people were excited about Judas Iscariot. For them, Judas Iscariot was their hero. Why? These were a people given to treachery. They always... Look for how to do something that will put them over the other person. So for them, the real issue was, how, how did this man work with this fellow for three and a half years? And this man did not suspect that this fellow would betray him. Wow! Judas was their hero. It took more than just that to convince them that Christ was the hero in that story. So we have to be careful. What People have heard about Jesus Christ. And we need to correct it as best as possible. We must be prepared at all times to tell people about Jesus Christ in simple language. Sometimes you have to use the things the people know. We are going to discuss more and more of that next week by the grace of God. Because you want the hearer, the listener, to be able to relate to what you are saying. If the listener cannot relate to what you are saying, then you are wasting your time. I remember the first time I was invited to a church. I won't mention the name of the church. The pastor was full of English. The man was speaking so much grammar. The only thing, I was a sinner. The, the only thing I did was, I just sat down there and I was looking at the girls in the church. That's all I was doing. I didn't hear a thing that that man said. Because for you to understand what he's saying, you have to have, have an encyclopedia. You don't go to church with a Bible in that place. You go with an encyclopedia, so that, or, or dictionary, in fact, more than a dictionary, so that you can understand what he's saying. That is, a, that is a fruitless attempt. That's why Paul said, I did not come immense wisdom. I did not come to speak a big, big grammar to show you that I'm eloquent. No! I only want to understand one thing. Do you know Christ? Do you understand his crucifixion and why he came? That's why I, that's, that, that's all I'm interested in. So we must make sure that when we are bearing witness, it's not about opening the Bible. It's not about letting people know how much Bible you know. It's about condensing the Bible and translating the Bible in a language and in a form that your listener can understand what you are saying and can be engaged therein. The, the, the Holy Spirit, we're going to mention some of it, we're going to discuss more of this. The Holy Spirit needs that as an input. 
Yes, it's the one that will bring conviction. But what you are saying must, must form the input for the Spirit of God to be able to say what it is, uh, to be able to do what it is that he wants to do. You must be able to speak to people about the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ. And why it is important that they align with him so that they can be saved from hell. Don't be ashamed to speak of heaven and hell because these are real places. And you can use illustrations. We're going to discuss more of that uh, next to by the grace of God. Illustrations to explain these things to people. For example, I always tell people, the fact that you didn't do physics and you don't understand what gravity means does not mean that if you jump up, you are going to hang. Whether you know it or not, if you jump up, you are going to fall down. If you, if you, if you climb on top of a tree and you say you want to walk your way from the height of the tree, you are going to crash to the ground. And it's gravity that's causing it. But nobody told you about gravity, but you know. So it's the same thing. Whether you are aware of it or not, if you are not born again, if you don't surrender your life to Jesus Christ, if you don't align yourself with what Christ did for you on the cross at Calvary, you will die. The death of a sinner. Whereas what God desires is that we die the death of the righteous. And when we are, when we are witnessing, we must witness with passion. We must witness with passion. Of what is it? say, well, you know, Jesus Christ died and you know when he died, he, well, um, you know, uh, it doesn't. It doesn't inspire confidence. It doesn't let the person who is listening to you know that you know what you are saying, brethren. I want us to just spend a few minutes, and of course, beyond beyond this time, talking to God, ask Him to revive us, to revive us again, so that we can be witnesses of Christ. Ask him to revive you again so that your testimonies will now be directed appropriately. When you speak of what has happened, what God has done in the lives of other people, you know that you are actually witnessing to, of, of, uh, you are witnessing Christ to somebody and you understand that you are not to waste that conversation. You can imagine somebody gives an opportunity to speak for just one minute. You better know how you are going to marry that woman so that you can throw in Christ. I remember an, 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 an incident uh, while I was in the States. A, a, a somebody flew in from Nigeria to America to attend um, a particular occasion. It was an occasion that was going to bring all her village people together in one place, in a, in a different city. So she told me that, am I, am I ready to come? That I said, well, I'm ready. If, you are, if they are ready, I'm ready. So she spoke to the chairman and she now called me and said, well, pastor, they said you should come, but... They're only going to give you five minutes, maximum 10 minutes, just to pray, to say opening prayer. I said, ah, no problem. <laughs> we will come. So we went. When I went there, I said, well, they said the, the man has this pastor will come and pray for us. They were all standing. I said, please sit down first. Because before I pray, God said, I should tell you something before I pray. And they said, okay, let's hear you. I think I ended, ended up spending about 15 minutes or so preaching the word of God, witnessing of Christ to them. And of course, over half of the hall, so at least raised their hands up that they wanted to receive Christ that day. After, after praying for them, they now prayed for the whole meeting and said, okay, I'm done. And I, and I left. The point I'm trying to make here is sometimes you only have five minutes. Five minutes. You must be able to look for four minutes of that five minutes to preach Christ in a manner that will impact the hearers, the listeners. It's important. And these things don't just happen because you are practicing it. No. Get into the place of prayer. That's why I'm urging us. Let us go to God now in prayer. And ask, say, Father, revive me. Revive me. Revive my spirit, O Lord my God. Revive me into witnessing again. Revive me, Almighty and everlasting God. Into the place where I bear witness. Of the Lord Jesus Christ. Where, where, where I can be a witness to the Lord Jesus Christ. Revive me, Almighty and everlasting God. Revive me, Lord. Revive me, Lord. Revive me, Lord. Let us pray. Let's put it in prayer. Let's put it in prayer. Let's put it in prayer. Let's begin to talk to the Lord and ask him to revive us. Revive me, O Lord. Revive me, O Lord. Revive me, my inner man, Lord. That whenever I go anywhere I go to, let me know. Let me let it come. To, to my mind that this is an opportunity to preach Christ. 
put that passion in me, Almighty and everlasting God. That passion, that desire to preach Christ at every turn, everywhere, anywhere. That, Lord, open my eyes and my heart to appreciate the reality of opportunities that are passing by every day of people that I need to speak to about the Lord Jesus Christ. Give me the, give me the wisdom, the, the counsel, the, the, the grace to be able to stir conversation to Christ, to be able to stir conversation in a manner that will make people to come to the realization of Christ. Let's pray. 